Conversations across time. Conversations across time. Conversations across cross time. Conversations across time. Conversations across cross time. Conversations across time. Conversations across cross time. Conversations across time. Conversations across time. Conversations across time. Conversations across cross time. Conversations across time. A call, call, call. Conversations call, call. Conversations call. Good evening and welcome to Conversations Across Time, the program that allows you, the viewer, to participate and watch conversations between historical figures from different time periods, hence Conversations Across Time. Tonight, our guests are Seated to my right, former state representative Babette Josephs. Welcome, Babette. Thank you. Thank you. Seated next to Babette is the fourth president of the United States, one of the founders of this country, President James Madison. Welcome, President Madison. Good evening, ma'am. Seated next to President Madison is one of our favorite guests, El Presidente. Fidel Castro. Welcome, Mr. President. Buenos noches. And seated next to President Castro is the man that is most responsible for just about everything that is in this studio. You know him as the genius of Menlo Park, better known as Mr. Thomas Edison. Welcome, Mr. Edison. What Thank a pleasure. You. Now, tonight we will discuss an issue that confronts us today. Social Security. Social Security. What is Social Security? Is there a need for it today? And uh, indeed, if you're under 30 years old, you probably think that Social Secu Security is not necessary. So we want to discuss this issue. And we'll, we'll, we'll back, give you some background information. The Social Security law was passed in 1935, 78 years ago. Its purpose was to provide benefits to people 65 and over. The benefits came from money they worked for and earned, but the money is, in, is collected by their employees. Tonight, we will evaluate the pros and cons of Social Security. So I'm just going to start, I guess, at the easiest point and say, and I'll throw it out to the panel, is there a need for Social Security? Well, you know, Ms. Crawford, nobody questions the constitutionality anymore of Social Security. The most retrograde politician you can think of in the world, or I won't say any names, but everybody has that person in his or her mind, is frightened to death to question anything about Social Security. So I have to say the answer is absolutely yes, and it's so much ingrained now after 78 years, it feels to us as if we've had Social Security for thousands of years. And it's done what it is supposed to have done, which was to save old people from living out their declining years in abject poverty. But I expect that the third president, third, fourth, fourth, fourth I was close, um, would have disapproved of it very violently. Most certainly, Madam. When I and my colleagues in the Continental, in the Constitutional Convention in 1787, uh, sat down to eat, uh, write the new Constitution for this nation, we we set forth a Bill of Rights, which which, uh, delineate, which outlined the rights of the citizen, and in the, in the making of the Constitution, we delineated specific authority to the federal government, which is national defense, foreign policy, and the post common office. currency. Yes, the post office, and the common currency. And in the Bill of Rights, we had the 10th Amendment, which stated specifically that those duties of government which were 
not directly and explicitly assigned to the federal government should be left to the states. And social, so-called social security, as you call it, is not one of these duties enumerated to the states. So it's your position. It's federal government. First of all, you, let, 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 let's be fair to our, our viewers. You've not told them that the 10th Amendment was something that you introduced to the Constitution. So I mean, let's just have full disclosure here, President Madison. Give now, I, 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 I guess what troubles me is when you make the statement that Social Security is, I, I want to use, without the penumbra, not under the umbrella of what the federal government was allowed to do? That is correct, madam. That is not the function of the federal government to provide so-called social security. So, so are you, is it your position the states should have done it? How the states conduct their internal affairs uh, outside of the realm of foreign policy and national defense and the common currency and the post office, it, such functions are best left to the states, we have agreed. So, so let, let's be clear. So that if the notion of the general welfare of the people of the country is to be left to the states. Now let's just suppose, for instance, that in Pennsylvania, we've decided that there should be an old age pension, and New Jersey, they've decided that there should not. Would that not mean that elderly people from New Jersey who do not have access to old age pension would naturally migrate to Pennsylvania? I mean, how do, how do you envision handling that? We don't envision it. As I have stated specifically, it is the role of the federal government to provide for foreign policy, national defense, post office, and currency. Any other functions of government are left to the states, and how the states uh, conduct their internal affairs in such realms as so-called Social Security, it is entirely left so, up so to so them. This all went to the Supreme Court, though, as everything does in this country. And I think that Mr. Edison knows something about that because a shareholder of his well, company brought that right. suit. There's a problem. Number one, if we permit the wages to be taken, the Social Security to be taken out of the person's wage, that they're going to complain, possibly go on strike, take the businesses down. What my responsibility would have to be at that time is to increase their wages to compensate for the deductions then the shareholders will start raising cane. And the market, it will affect the market of any public company. We're responsible for a lot of things that you like. Electricity, lighting, movie cameras, the advent of television and even computers. That was all done under my reign. But you weren't against I, Social but Security. I would, I, but I will say that I was against it because to me, one of the things that I was against was socialism. And that smacked to me, and my friends, by the way, my contemporaries. Let's talk about who your friends were. Please don't just say your contemporaries. Let's na name names, the usual Henry, suspects Henry Ford, I might add. Henry Ford. The, Henry Ford, the Mellons, the Rockefellers, who became liberal as time went on, but they were at that time, were my friends, and we, we hung out together. We played golf together. We all had homes on Jekyll Island to the Carolinas. And we talked almost every day, and the main subject we talked about in the restaurants and in the social hours was Social Security. Why do we need it? They're, they're, we're gonna have a revolution of people 25 at the, and much younger because they don't wanna pay for it because they can't envision themselves getting older. Well, most 25 year olds and didn't I, and that's not what, notice And that a, happens a today though. with Obamacare. In all honesty, you want to segue into that, I will tell you that Obamacare would have worked beautifully if it had followed the model of Social Security. It, it actually didn't because we live in a different time. And some of this time that we're living in, my companies were responsible for the development of many of the things that have the, that the United States and the world has access today. The Social Security, in our judgment, is an act of socialism which will affect, why don't we have health care, universal health care then? We didn't because that would have taken We're us to another our degree. Way up to it. 
<laughs> but in the meantime, in Cuba, they had it all. Well, they're talking about limited people. We have, we have more people living in the air, our business area now than Cuba has entirely in its population. That, that, does, uh, that doesn't mean there's not any validity to the Cuban model. Let, these gentlemen have used words that are so elementary to their thinking. You are saying I, 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 you are saying we, we, we. So you're yeah, French or island or whatever you're saying. But there are more people in living in Cuba who are more healthy than people living in your state of New Jersey who have to squander and beg for adequate health care. And Mr. Mr. Madison, your, your idea for forming a government that is only responsible for parts of the people's welfare is ludicrous. That's what the word is called, you ludicrous? My point, sir, my point, sir, is that uh, the, the reason we have uh, formulated the Constitution as we have done was due to the failure of the Articles of Confederation that were drawn up during our War of Independence. Well, independence for whom? For whom? Uh, please let me finish, sir. It, Very good. And during, so, and during, the, uh, during the period of the Articles of Confederation, there was Shays' Rebellion, where a, where a mob led by a militia captain uh, terrorized the, uh, the officials in the state uh, capital. And that led us to come to the conclusion that, that uh, excessive democracy was a danger uh, to this new republic. Uh, that, uh, uh, that the howling of the mob uh, could, could very well bring down the gov government and the proper functions of government uh, cannot be carried out by, by a historical mob. There, and I have come, and we have come to the conclusion. Just hysterical aristocracy, that's okay. What, what was your, your revolution was for the people, was not for, was not for the people? Was we, for you it and for was those people. For your friends and his friends, that's who yeah, your revolution right. was about? It, that's what the American Revolution was about, according to President Madison. Yes, it was. Oh, yes. Certainly yes, the government, wasn't for people with brown or black skin. Yeah. Certainly wasn't for women. The, the government of the, of the country, of this country, has to be left to uh, person, uh, the persons with the education and knowledge of government uh, so as to conduct its affairs for the benefit of the entirety of, of the, yes! uh, for the entirety oh, of the government and not for this, that, or other and particular interest group. And that's what Benjamin Cardozo said when he found that the federal government could <coughs> tax, could tax employers in order to make for the general welfare. That's, that's what he said. But exactly. I have general, well, like just said. you know, the I, general, I want to, I want to I do this. I, I want to ask because President Madison, you've advanced some very troubling principles. And I, I'm going to, we're going to take a break and come back to you on this because it does seem that from everything that you've said, the United States was created in its inception for people that look like you and Mr. Edison. But we'll take a break, we'll come back and ask Mr. Madison, President Madison, uh, what he feels was the basis of the founding of this country if not for, to take care of the aristocracy, the new, monarch, the new monarchy, so to speak. So when we come back, we'll ask you to answer that question. Thank Very you. Very well. Waiting for a bus. 
on a street corner when my friend Vivian drives by in a car and says, Babette, I want you. I need you. So I thought, sure. And I had a card with me, my business card. I gave it to her and I thought, I probably won't hear from Vivian again for a while. But right away, she emailed me, she called me, and now I'm doing her concept which is really, really interesting to make history alive and to relate it to what's happening now in our country, in our world. And Vivian dragged me into it. Oh, I can't say I really resisted too hard. And that's what I'm doing. Before the break, I asked or posed to President Madison what was his idea of the the, the reason for the creation of this country, because it sounds very much like uh, President Madison espouses that this country was created for the aristocrats. And I wanted to have, give you an opportunity to think about that. And so here we are back, and I'd like you to respond to that. Well, madam, you must understand that in, as we have uh, outlined the Constitution in 1787, you will not find the word democracy, because we do not find that did not find that to be a, an adequate form of government. That would, would have been that any mob, at, at any emotional mob at any given moment uh, dictating the policy. We, we have come to the conclusion that it would be best that the administration of the government at, its, at the state and federal levels uh, should be... State too. Yes, should be allotted to uh, those persons who have, who have property in land and also slaves, uh, who have had the education and leisure time to ponder and, and study the issues of, of the day and, and not be swayed by the hysteria of the ordinary people on the street. And or women. Yes, whatever. And I, we I believe think, it fact, is. In fact, when you enumerated property, and you said, I'm assuming you were talking about real property, Such and you were talking about personal property is what you considered slaves, and I am wondering if you didn't also mean women. I mean, did you not view women as personal property of men? Because during that time, it was just you guys in that room making these decisions. Yes, it was, and that has always been the case from time immemorial, and shall always be so. Shall Wait a minute, shall always be what? so as pertains to women? Because shall slavery is be. no longer as, a, as it has as, as it always has been, and as it always has been, madam, your gender will never attain state power and never we'll influence it. We'll be the president. That's what I think, soon. Mr. Edison, if you may shed some light on the subject. <laughs> In terms, in terms of equality for women in health and the assurance of people being able to live comfortably, do you concur with, concur with Mr. Mattis, Mr. President? Well, Madison? I agree with some of the things he said, but I do think women should have the right to drive. To drive? To drive and to vote and to participate in businesses. I believe that that strengthens the country. Oh, I, well, well, I believe. Ray for us, boy, oh, we have boy. gotten out of those shackles. Yeah. And I also further believe that it would seem to me that women appear to be more capable than men of making good decisions. For the businessman, no, for uh, well, for themselves well. now, yeah. because we won't permit him to make it uh, politically <laughs> well, or well, internationally. Man. But as time comes on, I am certain that women will rebel and have a large voice in the workings and the uh, mythology of what develops in our country. Now, Mr. Edison, that's very interesting because I did not realize that you had such a differing opinion mm. from President Madison. Well, I'm impressed, to tell you the truth, that, that you actually feel that women are capable. Excuse me. But my wife told me to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that when you have a democracy, everybody par should participate. Black, white, yellow, green, bright, not so bright, Poor. rich, and not so rich. Poor. We have to help each other. That's what it means. It strengthens the country. 
I am opposed, though, to socialism, which is a dirty word attached to democracy. And that has to be cleaned up because we're attempting with the social security bills to become a socialist nation. And I feel that that's only the first of many bills. But, but, that we'll but was there a revolution? Did people stop going to work? Did companies go down? Did the whole did civilization end, end mm -hmm. as we know it because the social security bill passed? No. No, <laughs> Not no, at all. no. No. Is no, any of that no. going to happen because the national, the Affordable Health Care Act passed? No. no, no. I don't think any of that's going to happen because, number one, it's become an ideology for people. It's the same things that's happening today overseas with people blowing, suicide bombers blowing themselves up. They believe they're going to a better place. Americans are developing kind of an attitude that it's based on political party lines instead of what's good for the country. And we're, our power is in the hands of few people, not the general run of the people living every day that you cross and say hello to and you eat with and you go to movies with. They, we don't really control our own destinies. We could, but we're so divided politically that this country could be stagnant for many years. Now, what's particularly and, interesting is that from your vantage point of being a successful businessman and, 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 and running your business before Social Security came into being, that now you, in our conversation across time, have had the ability to look at what Social Security has meant or does mean to so many seniors. And you're, you're able to see that. Now, that's particularly interesting when we when we, when we contrast that with President Madison. President Madison, who firmly in his heart believes that it's the, I'm sorry, give me your, for, the post office, the national the defense. And foreign policy and, foreign and policy. currency and, and everything else is left to the states. Oh, as same, we have enumerated in the. Uh, so wait a minute, I wanna, I wanna just stop you because yes. it's the post office. Currency, foreign currency, policy, military. Foreign policy. Yes and military. So yes. that means, according to you, um, that there would be no Federal Bureau of Investigation to investigate crimes that happen in this country. Or there C would only be a CIA. Or CIA, right? yes, yes. There would be totally. CIA, but there yes. would be no FBI. Yes. 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 Oh, I know and a lot it, about that. You must understand that in our era, we were from a primarily agricultural, agrarian economy. We have not uh, yet developed so, so industry agree, and manufacturers. You agree that the Constitution can possibly grow along with the country as the country mm -hmm. changes, which is what the Supreme Court said when his shareholder, when Edison's shareholder mm -hmm. brought a suit that ended up right before the Supreme Court. Now, how the... Uh, may how I the, uh, Yes, you may, sir. First of all, my shareholders are a different breed than, than the people walking around in the street that you possibly meet. They're, our shareholders are people of, of means, well, uh, frankly. So. And what, what you're saying here is that we had 13 countries. We didn't have 13 states because everybody was able to do their own thing. And that wasn't really the strength of our country as a power. We had no power <coughs> when we were younger. As we got older, which is kind of tied into Social Security, we suddenly agreed that as we got older, we got looking back, we got smarter, and that's what's happening well, to well, Social we moved Security. From farms to cities, we went from uh, really everybody was white and almost everybody was Christian who could vote, who was free. We decimated the indigenous natives. We brought people from other continents who didn't have our skin color and we subjugated them. So everybody who was free was the same, was, was white, was agrarian, was a farmer. Well, I mean, there, was, I think there were poor whites also. But I don't want to defend that policy because I but think- But it all changed. I, I, it has changed. And, 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 and with, in keeping with that, because it all changed, as a person who sits here and, 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 and believes that the beauty of the Constitution is that 
When things change, as Babette just mentioned, when things change, the Constitution is able to adopt. I think that that's exactly what a living it, document. It's a living document. It's a living document. It's not a static thing. And 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 I believe that that is precisely what. Justice Cardozo meant when he talked about that we have to be concerned about the general welfare. And, and, and this is such an important conversation didn't because... did Roberts really echo that in a way? Of when course. he said that it's, it is within the power of the federal government right. to tax people in order to pay for generally for... Well, for defense, health for what else health happened. Coverage. It's, it's not only health coverage, it's defense, it's all this education. Those are things that... Education uh, was never part of the Constitution. I know, but... I but, agree with you, we uh, should do it. It, is a, it's it. it came as a result of the Constitution. It wasn't part of it. Well, education was okay. supposed to be local. Well, you know, but I, I want to say something and that's then interesting about... And a Republican about, president make, puts a department. Right? Yes. And I look, at, I look at President Madison, who came up with this notion. He keeps talking about everything was deferred to the states. And when I hear these arguments today about states' rights and we should leave certain things to the states, it is very troubling to me because we, we, would have the inst we we'd have the instance of people going from one state to the other just because one state has better benefits. And that, that doesn't seem to make sense for wanting to build a strong country. And Mr. Madison, what 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 troubles me, you as one of the principal authors of the Federalist Papers. And the Federalist Papers were what you and your friends wrote and had published in New York, in the New York press, so that the country would agree that there should be a constitution and that the, the constitution was going to assure that there would never be a monarchy and that there would not be this class system. Yet, by the same token, everything that you've said here tonight seems to indicate that while you might have written the document and may have been concerned about the ratification of the Constitution, by the same token, you were setting up an, a class, an aristocracy. Yeah, but the, you know. An aristocracy, madam, of, of talent and capability oh, and oh, education. People like him, they look like you. Yeah. Yes, and, if and you choose to like say him, so, madam. Uh, yes, uh, we are. Yes, you have to understand. I was, I have been educated in, in the European Enlightenment, which stressed the Greek and Roman classics, among which were Plato's *The Republic*, and Plato, and, and Plato, through the mouth of Socrates, enumerated the necessity of a class of people trained specifically in the art of government. Uh, the person on the street and on them. the farm uh, yes. could not. A person trained uh, who is living on a farm or on the str streets of your, of your city, uh, could poss who might be trained, educated in this, that, or the other trade, could not possibly uh, fulfill some function oh of government God. as. as I, is necessary. I am. I, you know, this is this is so interesting, and and, and mm -hmm. it always happens. <laughs> we will have to take up this conversation across time again because I am particularly interested to hear what El Presidente has to say yeah. about this patrician notion that you seem to represent. And quite frankly, that's not what this country, at least that's not what we're yeah. told it's supposed to be about. It is the source of stable government, a class of people uh, administering the, the affairs of state and we expect lower classes of people. And we, we expect, expect we lower expect classes of people. Just, just do to, you uh, hear yourself? To entrust, uh, uh, trust my class in the administration of government. And with that, we are going to invite you back so that we can take up this conversation across time again because your class of people is what has led to so many problems in this country. But in that attitude world. is is pervasive. And it's still going on. So again, we will invite our panel back so that we can take up this discussion again. I'm sorry, it always seems that we run out of time when we just get to a point where it's a very heated conversation. Thank you very much. Please join us again. Across time. Conversations across cross time. Conversations across time. Conversations across time. Conversations across time. Conversations across cross time. Conversations across time. Conversations across cross time. Conversations across time. Conversations.
conversations across time. 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 Conversations across time.